Right here in Middle Tennessee. Love it. Love that call. Brent Doherty with you. Uh, Don Davenport is here. What, what up, Babson? That's right. Let's go. If you're new to the show, she really doesn't. She used to when she was a journalist. Yeah. But then she started hanging out with me. And then Slay. And then this guy was added to the mix. That's I'm in right. the building. I'm in the building. Oh, a little mix. Mm. Kind of like the mix. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Reputation out the window. Ronald Sylvester Slay. Mm -hmm. He's wearing a t-shirt that reads Tennessee, Tennessee. against all y'all. In orange and white. Wherever y'all live. <laughs> you heard Clay Madvig with the call there on the SEC Network. Joins us now. Clay, what's up? How are you? Hey, I'm great. How are you guys doing? Man, that was a fun game. And Southern Miss had a little juice there. It took uh, tears to the sixth inning before Tennessee took that uh, that lead on that three-run homer, and it was a shot. Yeah, it sure was. You know, Tavares' tears, I think I kind of said it on the air. I kind of felt like he was due. He hadn't, he hadn't done anything up to that point really significantly in the tournament, and it just felt like he was – he was ready to break out and do something special, and it just happened that that was kind of the that was kind of the swing moment of the game, uh, the three run homer in the sixth inning. Because up to that point, it was still uh, you know kind of hanging in the balance. So tears, like you know, radio guys never do this, but I've already done this to him. He is the Christian Moore next year. Oh he's boy, gonna, he's yeah. going to make that jump like Christian Moore did this year. Well, I mean, I think that case could be made. I, I mean, as far as his athleticism, uh, all the tools, Christian Moore has all the tools, that's for sure. Everybody oh, my goodness. That, but, 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 but Kavaris Tears is kind of in that same category. I mean, he can, he can run. Uh, he can hit for power to all fields. Uh, you know, he's got a, a really good batting average. Uh, you know, he was well over 300. Uh, drives in a lot of runs. And, you know, I know he was told at one point that – you're not a good defender. I mean, we were talking to Tony Vitello about this, and, and, and at one point, they just said, hey, here's the deal. You're not really good with your glove right now. You, you've got some <laughs> things to work on. And I, he took it personally. And, and what happens this year, he's all SEC defensive team. So uh, he's, he's rounded that part of his game uh, into form. And, yeah, he could, have a, he could have a really breakout year um in his draft year and you know look out sec because here comes kavar's tears so <clears throat> i'm curious matt Vig who's this wait, wait who's this? Who's <laughs> she doesn't Hello. give a damn about her reputation <laughs> did you hear <laughs> so so to give our listeners um a, a little uh i guess behind the scenes here matt Vig and i worked on a football crew together my very first year with espn which was what like 11 years ago clay i think oh god it, it might even be longer than that See, it might have been it's yeah. amazing that they let a 16 year old on the sidelines to be a sideline reporter I know, isn't, isn't that, that amazing crazy i don't know uh and then <laughs> we 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 did a another tour together like two years ago with our guy rocky who's on our show sometimes too so uh so clay knows all about me <laughs> all all the good and the bad. Um, I know where all the bodies are buried. That is that is correct. So, okay. You know how, I know baseball is different, but you know football, we sit, we meet with the coaches day before the game and, and whatever and really kind of get to, to feel personalities and all of that with the coaches. I know you guys don't per se have like a production meeting or a coaches meeting, so to speak, when it comes to baseball, but your interaction with Tony Vitello, like kind of fill us in on the behind the curtain of what he's like heading into a regional like this. Well, I, I think it's changed in recent years um, mm -hmm. based on what he has learned, um, the experiences, the good and the bad. Um, and, you know, you're the number one national seed. You've got a bullseye on your back. And, you know, how are you going to lead your team so that your team uh, reacts and feeds off of your energy? Mm. I don't know that Tony handled it as well as he could have, and I think he'd be the first to admit that a couple of years ago. Yeah. Okay, they're the number one national seed. Um, it's like they I, – I don't think – I think they took their eye off the ball a little bit. And, and, and it was all about mental energy and how you exude that and, and how you carry yourself. And I think they let their emotions get away with them a couple of years ago. If you could tell by the body language this past weekend, these guys are dialed in. Mm. Um, they, were, they were not hyper-emotional. 
uh, after the final out of, of the game on Sunday night, you know, it, it's like, yep, been there, done that. Now it's on to the next thing. They won't, weren't overly exuberant. And I think that that's a, that's a good indication that they've dialed in. They've learned from their mistakes. There's a handful of guys on this team, you know, uh, the Christian Moores, uh, you know, some of, the, some, of the, some of the guys from the pitching staff, um, certainly that know what it was like to feel that heartbreak a couple of years ago. Cal Stark, you know, these guys know, hey, this is what we've got to do to make sure that being the number one seed and getting upset on our home field doesn't happen again. And uh, I think that what you saw the other day, uh, the other few days, was pretty good indication that they've got their mind right. Yeah, no doubt. Clay, when you when you watch this team, you talk about them being zeroed in. Is this the difference in this group and that group two years ago? It was almost like you were, uh, well, me as a fan, I was waiting on someone to play catch up or a hero ball to be hit because it was done so um, so much um, yeah. and two years ago, and now it's one of those. You know what? Okay, we'll get it together. Whether it's defense, whether it's pitching, whether it's I thought the catcher is that is that something too that that two thousand I mean that team two years ago was missing as well that this group has. I everything was everything during the regular season almost came too easy for Tennessee yeah. in twenty twenty two, and yeah. I, you know whereas. Whereas this year, there have been a couple of bumps in the road, for sure, and not many, but just mm-hmm. enough to, you know, I think to keep them level-headed. Uh, that team two years ago, arguably, I mean, I've heard this from several people who've watched more college baseball than I have, and I've watched a fair piece, said that that was the best te- college team they'd ever seen on the field. And and then to lose and not even get to Omaha, uh, that was extremely gut-wrenching yes. for them. Uh, okay, so this year, they've got, pretty much all of the same strengths. Uh, are they as dominant as the other team in 2022 was? Maybe not during the regular year, but there are no weaknesses in this team. I asked Ben McDonald on the air. I said, if you had to poke a hole somewhere, where would it be? And and he really didn't he didn't answer me. No, he, he, he didn't. He couldn't think of one. Mm-mm. And so and and you know, I'm I'm not the expert he is, but you know, I've seen enough to know that this team has got what it takes to certainly win it all. Yeah. Um, you know, Drew Beam is the one guy that I wish, you know, if if I'm a Vols fan, I wish I would see more dominance from mm. him. And mm-hmm. and I think that that still can happen. And and you know, if he clicks it into gear at the right time, uh, that's all that it takes. But A.J. Kazi certainly is doing mm-hmm. everything right, and, and that quirky situation where they've got Stamos opening up for him seems to be working, so I doubt they're going to mess with that. You know, uh, Beam and then and then Xander Sechrist, uh, you know, he gave them a, a pretty good start on mm-hmm. Sunday, certainly good enough to to let the offense do its thing and, and get out of there with a, with a sweep of the regional and move on to the Super. So I think the pitching... From a starting standpoint, it's terrific. And then on the back end, you've got guys like Connell and Snead. Snead can throw 100. Yeah. So I don't really see too many deficiencies on the pitching staff. The offense is just absolutely under, unbelievable. They can blow it out of the ballpark one through nine. And, and you know, the nine man in the order hitting three home runs in the regional proves <laughs> yeah. that. So uh, I think I think Tennessee is is poised to make a very deep run in this thing. Now, will they win it all? Yeah, who knows? I mean, right. it's baseball. Anything can happen. Guys have bad days. Mm-hmm. Guys get cold at, at the wrong time. But certainly the makeup is there. And again, I think the emotional piece is different this time. Clay Matvick with us uh, from ESPN. And uh, yeah, I was talking to a buddy who's a Texas A&M fan. And, and I was like, you know, you, Tennessee's the number one overall seed. And we all know the stat that that, that seed hasn't won since 1999, the Miami Hurricanes. Right. But Texas A&M actually the favorite to win the tournament. And his response was, man, I wish we had one more starting pitcher. And like you, you start to, to look around college baseball. I think every Everybody, every fan of every team could say that. Um, so Same thing it, everywhere. It, yeah, it's interesting to watch these managers deal with these pitching situations and, and these bullpen games and, and uh, where a reliever actually starts for the starter and things like that. It's fascinating to me. Now, just about everybody's dinged up at this time. Everybody wishes yeah. they had a number three starter. Everybody wishes they had two or three more bullpen arms. Um, everybody's playing a little nicked up. Um, so that's, that's not going to be... That, that's not going to be anything uh, – every team's going to have that issue, right? Yeah. Um, I think, again, 
especially now with Evansville coming out of Greenville. Who yeah. saw that coming? Yeah. Right. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the thing that Tennessee has to avoid is overconfidence mm. and just taking their eye off the ball. Uh, based on what happened a couple of years ago, my money would be that's not going to happen. Yeah. Just because uh, it's, it's, it's almost entirely what Tony V talked to us about the other day in our pre, uh, pre-tournament meetings. It's, it's basically what he started talking about first thing. Let's keep our let's keep focused. We're not going to rest on our laurels. The regular season championship doesn't matter. What we did in March and April and May, early May doesn't matter. Uh, the SEC tournament in Hoover is it's ancient history now. We have work to do. And um, Evansville is a plucky team. I got to be honest with you. Don't know a ton about them. I, I'm a I'm Same. a big fan of the Missouri Valley for my years working in Omaha. Uh, when Creighton was still in the league and, and covering sports out of the Valley that way. And I, I do a lot of Valley basketball during the winter. Um, so I'm familiar with Indiana State having seen them in uh, the Supers last year in Fort Worth. I know that that's a good baseball league. And obviously they did something right to come out of there. Cliff Godwin's got a great program at ECU. They've been snake bit for three decades. <laughs> yeah, I, they've never just, made it to Omaha, they've right? They've never yeah. made it to Omaha. That's I, crazy. I think this, uh, Don, I think this was the 34th or 35th year that they've been in the national tournament, and they're not going to Omaha. It's wow. the most oh. by far of any college baseball program. They are constantly the bridesmaid. And in one of these years, they're going to crash through to Omaha. And when they do, they're going to shake it up just like Coastal did in 2016. Yeah. Um, but, but uh, you know, they're limping back uh, back home right now, and that's that's too bad. Clay, I've got to ask you, man, um, you've been to a lot of ballparks and what you've seen as far as this resurgence and the renovations taking place at Lindsey Nelson. What, what, how is that atmosphere? Because I, I haven't been able to make it up, man, and I, I'm, I'm ashamed to say so, man, but it's, well, it's a you, different you atmosphere. Need, you need to get there. You might want to wait now until they do the uh, construction because from yeah. every, everything I'm hearing, it's going to be fantastic. It's going to go from... Uh, you know, they set a record uh, on Friday night with 6,300 plus. And it, uh, what I've been told is that after the um, the improvements are made, it's going to expand it to about 8,000. And it's going to be real fan friendly. And, and you know, Tony V is saying, yep, but unfortunately, we're just keeping up in the SEC. We're just right. finally getting around to getting to where everyone else is. But the one thing that Tennessee has um, that you know, some programs in the SEC don't have, and there are a lot that do, and maybe even some with more. But they've got passionate fans, really passionate fans. The, the fans of Tennessee baseball were 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 really fun to watch this weekend. Um, you know, they, they they're into every pitch. They chew on the umpires. They <laughs> they they make it hard on the the opposing pitcher. That Indi- that poor Indiana starter. Um, on seven on walks. Set. It would have been Saturday night. Yeah, yeah. The seven walks. Yeah. My God, that's tough. I felt so bad for that kid. And and the not, fans... not me and Slay because we went to Tennessee. No, I right. get it from you. I get it from you. Yeah, we, we were watching uh, watching <laughs> you guys in <laughs> in my backyard. We're like walking <laughs> that on night. Turnstile yep. that thing. <laughs> and, and my <laughs> husband's an IU grad, so it was uh, uh, it was not pretty for him. No, but on a human level, I felt for the kid. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I, yeah I never have, a, I never have a, a rooting interest in the games anyway. But, you know, from on a human level, I felt for that kid. I mean, he obviously just couldn't find the strike zone. And the, and the Tennessee Volunteer fans had as much to do with that. <laughs> and they knew it. And they were eating it up with a spoon. You know, <laughs> once they got under that kid's skin and he balked, it was yeah. all over. The, bulb the lights it. went out in his. You could just see it in his eyes. The, he went dark in the eyes, and it was over. It's like, uh, it, you know, it, it was time to take him out. And and he hung in there for I think another inning, but uh, the damage had been done, and, it, and, it, and then it was on cruise control for Tennessee. But that that's the kind of environment that Lindsey Nelson has now, and it's only going to get better in the future because you're going to be able to fit in another 1,500 fans next year. Yeah, that's crazy. It was like 93 pitches and two and a third, something like that. Clay <laughs> Matvick yeah. with the SPM with us on 3HL. Clay, last one for me, man. You got you you, t- you spoke about this team and their mental fortitude and where they are as far as being, um, I guess you can use humble as, as one that I'll use that word, humble and not braggadocious in a sense, but I think it always starts at the top. What's the difference that you've seen in Coach Vitello as far as his mental state and where he is? Well, you know what I? You know what I? I probably should have answered that more directly when you asked a similar question last time. I I think that that's the key right there. He's different. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I think I think he's still learning as a head coach in a lot of ways. I mean, he's had a lot of success in a short amount of time, and he's still a young man. He's 45. I mean, that's young for me anyhow. Absolutely. (laughs) I I think that he learned from from the other disappointments in the past. And how the the team is going to read their leader, and they're going to feed off of him, and they're going to take direction from him. And I think Tony is a little bit more stoic, a little less – Emotional, a little less hot, a little less, a little, little bit more even keel. He's 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 learned how to handle the ebbs and flows a little bit better, so that little moments don't turn into big swing moments, you know. And and I think he's going to be the right captain for the ship right now because of the way he's emotionally more balanced. Does that make sense? Made a lot of sense. That was perfect. Uh, I I I and, and just. Because he he expressed that to us when we talked to him the other day. Not like he was some crazy caveman a couple of years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but I, well, yeah, he was, admit, I mean, you could make the hot. argument yeah. he was he ran hot. <laughs> yeah, he ran hot. And so I think he knows that and, and the team is gonna feed off of what ener- whatever energy he exudes. Mm-hmm. And so he's trying to be a little more mellow. Yeah, I thought that was I thought that was a lot from Tony in in the years past, but but I also understood when you're establishing a program, you're trying to establish that fire, and you're not going up against one or two teams in your conference. You're going against a conference that is top notch, game in and game out, and you got to be able to light that fire constantly. No, you do. Game in and game you out. Do. Yeah. No, you do. And I think he thought the same thing, um, but now he has realized that they can have success. Yeah. and uh, be be level-headed about it at the same time. Totally agree. It's a delicate balancing it act, is. and he's figured it out. <laughs> yeah, You play, uh, you feed off your team, your team feeds off you, and they're all one big happy family. But this is a different group, that is for sure. Clay, uh, appreciate the time, man. Really appreciate it. Yeah, hey, hey, it's always good to talk to you folks. You take care down there. Yeah, yes, Clay, give us some more on real quick before you leave. No, if you got no, it. Oh, no, okay. no, right, no. Right. He's loyal. He's not going to tell you anything. <laughs> yeah, well, we're up here in Minnesota today. We're all excited that Justin Jefferson's under contract. Yeah. Oh, that's that? right. We've I'm been talking about that. it. Yeah, so, said, you need to move to Nashville. I don't know why you're still living in hey, Minnesota. Hey, I, I told my wife when we when we were engaged and getting ready to get married, and we were deciding, you know, how we were going to proceed with our life. I said, okay, I'm working for ESPN. I essentially can live anywhere as long as I have an airport. And you know, I wanted to live in the South. I threw Nashville out there as an option, and uh, and you know, so I was for the Nashville option, and she wanted to live in Minnesota. So Ooh. we compromised. Wow, to live in Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a way to compromise. compromise. <laughs> that's about right. How many non-winter months do y'all get up there? Like two. Well, that's why I want to get back outside after this phone call. We got about ten minutes left. <laughs> <laughs> Clay Mavic, ESPN. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. All right. See you. All right. All right. Love see you, Clay. There you go. Uh,